Hello, and welcome to this video on creating complex joins in Tableau. This tutorial is going to be about what happens when we join together more than two tables in the Tableau Data Connection screen. We'll be exploring what data you can expect to keep and exclude for several types of join configurations. For an introductory video to joins in Tableau, see the training video Join Types in the On Demand Training section of Tableau's website. When we're dealing with large data sets, it can be difficult to see what's going on when you're joining tables together. Today, we'll be using much smaller and simpler tables so that we can get an intuitive feel for how joins work. First, because you really learn the most through doing, let's have a small exercise. Pause the video here and consider which of these tables on the screen you would use as your primary table and what fields we would use to join these tables together. Once you've done that, feel free to hit play again. Great! There are many ways to join these tables together. I'll walk you through what I think is the most logical way. I'm going to say that the customers table is the most important table here, and that's going to be our primary table. And we're going to use all of these other tables to bring in additional information about our customers, such as their orders, the cities they live in, and other information. Here we have a diagram showing our tables, the fields for each table, and the fields that are used to join each table together. This is sometimes known as an ERD, or Entity Relationship Diagram. I've put stars beside every field that I want to use to join tables together. These are fields that have common data between different tables, such as name ID and customers matching up with name ID and orders, or city in our cities table matching up with city name in our city demographic data table. The colored lines between the matching fields and tables are so that we can see how tables are going to join to each other. For this example, we want to keep all of the information from the main tables that we're using to join things together, so these will all be left joins. Now, let's go ahead and open up Tableau and actually perform these table joins. From the main screen, we'll go ahead and connect to a text file over here on the left. This will take us to a file browser where we can choose which text files we're going to be using. I have all of my files in the same folder, and I'll simply click on Customers, which is the primary table we're using. Our Customers table is now in the data pane, and you can see all of our data underneath. Here, we only have four rows for this table. We're now ready to begin dragging other tables in and joining them together. First. We'll start with orders. Tableau immediately creates an inner join between these two tables, and if we click on that join, we can see that it's correctly joining the tables on name ID. Even if Tableau gets these joins right most of the time, it's a good idea to always open up your join and make sure the matching fields are correct. The data below has changed as well to bring in the newly joined orders data. Order ID order cost, and the matched name ID. Notice that since we have the tables interjoined right now, we've excluded records where there wasn't a matching name ID in the orders table. That means that name IDs 2 and 3 have been left out. If we don't want to exclude those rows, like in our case, we can create a left join instead. Now we have at least one row for each name ID in our customers table. If there isn't any matching data in the orders table, then nulls are used for those fields, like we have in these two rows. Also, you'll, you'll notice that we have two rows for name ID 1 now, because there were two records in the orders table with that name ID. This is a really important concept called a one-to-many relationship that we're going to return to later. Let's finish joining the rest of these tables together. First, loyalty customers. Notice that Tableau automatically knows to join it to customers instead of orders, but even if it didn't, we could fix that by clicking on the join icon and choosing the correct fields from the correct tables, like you can see here. We'll change it to a left join, and you can see that we add in more nulls where we don't have matching data. In this case, nulls exist where the customer is not a loyalty customer. Now, cities and we'll change that to a left join as well. 
and verify the joining fields. And then finally, our last table, city demographic data. Here, Tableau is giving us an error because it's trying to join the table to customers and isn't sure what fields to use. We can go ahead and go in here and tell it to join it to the cities table instead on city and city name. And we'll change that to a left join as well. Now we have all of our data joined together, which will provide for much more interactivity in Tableau than the separated tables would have. Notice that we only have one more row than we started out with, and that the additional row is from the additional order for customer with the ID 1. Before we move on, one interesting tidbit. I encourage you to experiment with this for yourself, but a property of these joins is that it doesn't matter the order in which you execute them. This is analogous to the idea of associativity in math. You can execute any of these joins, and no matter what order you do it in, after all of the joins, you'll always end up with the same final table. This is a neat concept that you can use to help you mentally evaluate which rows you're going to end up with after all of your joins. Now we're going to move on to a couple of examples to show you why you need to keep your joins in mind when building views in Tableau. Go ahead and go to Sheet 1. Earlier, remember that we ended up with multiple rows containing the same name ID data for customer 1 because we had multiple orders for that customer. We're going to go through a couple of examples that will show why you need to remember that when constructing views in Tableau and how to deal with it. Let's say we wanted to find the average age of all of our customers. We know that our customers' ages are stored in the field or in the measure age. And so we will go ahead and just drag that out and select average. And we get that the average age of all of our customers is 50.2. This seems reasonable, but unfortunately, it's not correct. The reason it's not correct is because this is taking the average for all of the ages in our data, and we have duplicate data for customer 1, which means that customer 1's age is actually in the calculation twice. You can verify this by manually adding up all the ages and finding the average and seeing that it gives us 47.75. So that's the number that we're going to be looking for. To get the correct age average, we're going to use level of detail expressions that are new in Tableau 9. For more detailed discussion of level of detail expressions, see the Tableau white paper or other training videos online. Since we want to calculate the average across our name IDs, instead of across all rows, we're going to use the LOD expression include. We could also use fixed here with the same result. So we'll go ahead and do include and we're going to include our name ID in this calculation. Then we'll take the average of our age. And that's it for the LOD expression. This is looking at all of the rows for each unique name ID and then averaging those ages for each person together. And since all the ages for each person are the same, the average will just be that number as well, which is just the age of the person. We could also use min or max instead of average here. So this calculation will result in one age per name ID. Now we'll go ahead and take the average of this as well. Now we hit enter, and you'll see that we get 47.75, which is the correct average age of all of our customers. I'll do a little formatting here to turn it into a colored text table. There we go. That's all for this video. But try experimenting with these concepts yourself, and maybe even construct your own sample tables to play around with. I hope that you now have a better sense of how complex joins are created in Tableau. Thanks for watching.